What's up guys, continuing the topic of uh, WebRTC, today I'm going to show you how to send images uh, using data channel. I'm not sure if I made a video about uh, data channel, but if not, I'm going to link the blog post in the description so you can check it out. And uh, here's the data channel activity where before I had a sample of how to send text messages using data channel to other peer, peer connection. Here's an input to send button and Here's the text view to display it uh, as a message received from the other client. It's a it's a local activity, so both clients are in one activity. But uh, but if you tried the complete activity where I used signaling and uh, two client uh, approach, I'm pretty sure you can adopt the data channel to it. So here's a click listener for sending messages. I'm just gonna show you how sending messages uh, work. I retrieve the input from edit text. Convert the string to bytes over here. Message uh, get bytes. It's a string method with passing a char set and wrap it in a byte buffer and then sending it uh, using local data channel to the other client. Here's how I retrieve uh, data channels using a peer connection create data channel. And here I'm providing a listener for for handling incoming messages and other stuff. If you notice, I've added a dash s appendix. Ignore that for now, I'm gonna explain it later. Now let's get to sending images. I'm using my library to pick images from camera or gallery. It's called Smart Image Picker. So I'm gonna briefly show you how it works and uh, check it out if you want. Uh, the link is gonna be in this description. So here's the button which opens camera. After the pick image is taken, I'm sending it using data channel to the other client and uh, and after the image is received, it's displayed in this image view. Uh, here's my image picker and yeah, that's basically, that's the handling for when image is picked. And to trigger opening camera, just call open camera. And uh, after the image is picked, uh, this uh, listener is triggered with image URI, or you can retrieve an image file from the instance of the image picker. Then what you need is to convert it to byte array and uh, send to the other client. Here's my method to to read it into a byte array using buffer to input stream. Read it into this byte array and uh, close it after that, returning the byte array and then just send those bytes to the other client using uh, the same byte buffer wrap byte array ignore this for now and uh, the send method that you've seen before now what you can do is just ignore all this code right and just send the whole byte array the whole f uh, image file which could be up to 3 max or to max whatever the size is and of course preferably you would uh, set it in chunks so that's why I'm using uh, chunks of uh, 64,000 bytes maximum size uh, of the sending message to send this image file on the other client what's gonna happen is uh, on message of a peer connection observer implementation is gonna be called for each chunk you send and uh, in this uh, data channel buffer there's gonna be a byte array that uh, you need to use to build your image now because the other client doesn't know when the image file ends so basically uh, he doesn't know when the he retrieved all the data you need to tell him uh, what, uh, what exact size of the image is coming so that uh, in this method after all bytes are retrieved, I can display the image. And it's up to you for any implementation you want because it's a really low level. What I'm doing is sending sending the image size as a first message here. I call it meta and uh, the same it's a it's a string with the appended uh, dash i. So this is a type of the incoming uh, message so in order for me to handle both text and image types here i have uh, an image oops 
have an image type and a string. In a string case, it's just a one message with the dash s in the beginning and the message itself coming after it. In case of the image, the first message is in meta using with the type and the size of the upcoming file as a string. So it's an integer and uh, I convert it to, to a string. So it's gonna be something like that coming uh, to the other client. Then we iterate over the number of chunks and send them all using the convenient method uh, with offset and length of the uh, bytes from the this given array so that we can reuse it. After the loop, if uh, this image size is not multiple of 64,000, we're gonna have a remainder and uh, we just need to send those remaining bytes. They're gonna be less than 64,000, so just send them and that's it. Now let's take a look at what's happening on the other client. This message handles both uh, text and image types, so it's uh, gonna be a bit cluttered, but here's what's happening. You have a byte buffer as an input from on message, and first you retrieve the byte array. Then I'm uh, checking if I'm currently retrieving a file. If not, then I'm reading the message as a string and checking the, its type. If it's an image, I check the incoming file size and save it as a field, parsing the rest of the string once again, it's something like that, parsing this part, saving it, and creating a byte array for incoming file using this size, and save uh, receiving file as a true. If it's a string, just uh, retrieve the message uh, from here, it would be actually uh, here, and display it uh, on in, in this text view. So now we receive the first message. This one is gonna happen when the image bits are coming. Iterating over this byte array and just uh, building up my local byte array. And once the whole file is retrieved, this block is gonna run to decode bytes into a bitmap and set it uh, as an image. That's basically it. Now this block handles only one me message uh, incoming at a time. So, for example, if there is uh, there is one and uh, right after it uh, there is coming another one, it's gonna mess everything up because uh, I'm just having one byte array for one file and uh, it's just not gonna work. And uh, Feel free to come up with a solution that's gonna handle multiple f incoming files. It's not hard. And uh, again, yeah, using data channel, you can send any f type of files you want and everything is in your hands. All right, you can get the source code on GitHub. The link is gonna be in the description. Uh, click like if you liked it, subscribe, talk to you later.